All right, so uh, we're diving into all the venom. Let there be carnage reactions. Oh, yeah. Lots to unpack there. Yeah, tons of uh, social media buzz from critics at the premiere. Right. And, you know, everyone wants to know the same thing. Oh, for sure is Venom. The Last Dance actually worth all the hype. It really is amazing how much people are talking about this movie. I know, right? Even before, like, the official reviews come out, these early reactions can tell us a lot, you know? Totally. And I think... Uh, the first thing that jumps out is just how excited everyone seems. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. We're seeing words like epic, monumental. Yeah. Some people are even saying stuff like best comic book film ever. Wow. Oh, and uh, someone even called the final act bonkers, which I it's mean. bonkers, huh? It definitely has me intrigued, but also maybe a little terrified. Well, yeah. I mean, it's good to remember that these reactions are all spoiler free. Right? Oh, yeah, yeah. They want to get people excited without giving too much away. Yeah. But you're right. Even with that in mind, like the level of excitement is pretty undeniable. Yeah. And I think, you know, when we see stuff like that, it makes those comparisons to like early 2000s comic book movies even more interesting. Oh, yeah. Interesting for sure. What do you think they mean by that, though? Why? To me, that could go in a lot of different directions. Yeah. It's a good question. Yeah. Um, I think for me, when I think about those early 2000s comic book movies, mm -hmm. I think about like a certain aesthetic and tone, yeah, you know, okay. like a certain look and feel, yeah. like a blend of practical effects and CGI and uh, a real willingness to embrace both like the action, yeah. but also the humor, mm -hmm. often with like a bit of a darker, grittier feel than what we see in a lot of superhero films today. So maybe not quite as polished or interconnected as like the MCU. Right, exactly. But with its own unique kind of charm. Exactly, yeah. I think that's a good way to put it. Okay, that makes sense. And then I think some of the specific details that are mentioned in these reactions uh -huh. really seem to support that idea. Like um, one person mentioned like a symbiote fish. And then there's this whole thing about like a Mrs. Chen dance sequence. Interesting. So it does seem like there's this willingness to embrace the more bizarre, the more over the top elements of like the Venom comics. Definitely. Yeah, I think so. Okay, but here's where things get even more interesting because, you know, you have some reactions that are like wildly positive. Yeah. But then you have others where people are acknowledging some pretty significant flaws. Oh, right. I mean, there's this one quote where someone calls it incredibly bad. Really? But then in the same sentence, they say it's the best of the three Venom films. Wow. So how can the movie be both of those things? Exactly. How is that even possible? Well, you know, it's funny because this kind of reminds me of that whole idea of guilty pleasure films. Mm, yeah. Like those movies that even though they might have objective flaws, mm -hmm. like plot holes or pacing issues or whatever, they're still just so enjoyable. Right. And I feel like based on what we're seeing, Venom, mm -hmm. let there be... Carnage might fall into that category. Okay. Like, it's a film that you can just have fun with, even if you recognize its imperfections. All right, so maybe not like a cinematic masterpiece. Right. But potentially a wild and entertaining ride. I think so, yeah. Okay, and then, of course, we have to talk about uh, the elephant in the room. <laughs> What's that? All those Spider-Man 4 rumors. Oh, right. I mean, just... given that Sony controls the rights to the Spider-Man characters, like, this could be huge. Yeah, absolutely. What do you think it all means? Well, I mean, the whole relationship between Sony's Spider-Verse and the MCU is complex, right? Yeah, it's definitely complicated. Yeah, so yeah, th these rumors could refer to anything. Right. From like a simple post credit scene to like a much larger crossover event. Mm -hmm. But we know fans really want to see these worlds collide. Oh, for sure. And Sony definitely knows that. Yeah. So, you know. So basically anything is possible at this point. Pretty much, yeah. Which honestly just makes it even more intriguing. Oh, for sure. But I think uh, one thing that really surprised me was how many people mentioned, like, the emotional depth of the film. Oh, really? Yeah. Like, people are using words like phenomenal. Wow. One person even said, a cry, maybe. Interesting. I really wasn't expecting that. Yeah, it is fascinating, isn't it? Yeah. Because it really does seem like venom, let there be banned. Carnage isn't just mindless action and special effects. Mm -hmm. Like, there's a deeper exploration of that relationship between Eddie Brock and Venom. Well, and I think it makes sense, right? Like, considering this is their last dance, right? there's bound to be some sense of closure, maybe even some bittersweet moments. Exactly. And, you know, it's important to remember, these are just the initial reactions. Oh, yeah. Like, there's going to be so much more to unpack once we actually see the film. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Speaking of unpacking, uh, one reaction actually mentioned Null. Oh, wow. Now, for those of us who aren't like hardcore comic book fans, can you explain who or what Null is? Oh, yeah, sure. So Null is um, 
It sounds kind of intense. He's a very interesting and very powerful character from the comics. Okay. Essentially, Null is like the god of the symbiotes. Oh, wow. Okay. He's like this ancient, formidable being, huh. and he plays a major role in Venom's like backstory and mythology. So is Null actually going to appear in the film? Mm -hmm. Or is this just like a clever Easter egg for the fans? Well, that's the million dollar question, isn't it? Yeah. But I think the fact that they even mention Null. Yeah. It kind of suggests that Venom, Let There Be Carnage, is going deeper into the lore of the symbiotes, mm -hmm. which could have major implications for the future of the franchise. Wow. This deep dive is already getting pretty intense. I know, right? But I think uh, before we get too lost in speculation, let's take a step back and consider what we've learned so far. Yeah. Good idea. Okay. So... It seems like Venom, Let There Be Carnage, is shaping up to be a wild ride. It does, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It sounds like it's embracing the over-the-top absurdity that people loved about the first film. But it's also hinting at like a more emotional depth. Yeah. And a deeper exploration of the Venom mythos. For sure. And then, of course, we have that whole Spider-Man 4 question just looming in the background. Right. It just adds another layer of intrigue to everything. Yeah. It's a lot to process. It is. And this is really just the tip of the iceberg. That's exactly. We've got so much more to discuss. But before we jump into the next part of our deep dive, okay. I want to hear from you. What are your initial thoughts on Venom? Let there be carnage. Yeah. What are you thinking right now? Are you excited? Are you skeptical? Are you cautiously optimistic? What parts of these early reactions stand out to you? Yeah, what are you most looking forward to or maybe even dreading about this film? Take a moment to consider those questions. Yeah. And then we'll be back to explore them further in just a bit. Sounds good. Welcome back. So much to talk about with this one. Oh, yeah, I know, right? It seems like there's a ton of... Uh curiosity surrounding this movie definitely and rightfully so you know yeah it's not every day that we see a superhero sequel that leans into the absurd quite like this one seems to right exactly okay so one thing that really stood out to me in the reactions was the emphasis on the dynamic uh -huh. between eddie brock and venom like yeah, their relationship. How has that relationship actually evolved in this film yeah well it seems like a lot of critics are pointing to like a real deepening of their bond. Oh, interesting. Yeah. You know, it's not just a parasitic relationship anymore. Okay. They're like partners, albeit dysfunctional ones. Right. You know, they've learned to tolerate each other, even rely on each other. So we're getting more buddy comedy vibes in this one alongside the superhero action? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Definitely. I remember, like, some of those laugh out loud moments from the first film. Oh, yeah, for sure. And it does sound like uh, yeah. Venom. Yeah. Let There Be Carnage really doubles down on the humor. Oh, yeah. I mean, there were mentions of car karaoke. Oh, wow. Even dog rescuing. I, which paint a picture of a film that definitely doesn't shy away from the absurdity. No, not at all. Of their dynamic. Yeah. Okay, but what about that symbiote fish? Oh, yeah. Someone mentioned. Like, yeah. what is that? I'm completely baffled by that one. Yeah, I think we're all kind of in the same boat there. Yeah. It's like one of those details that's so out there. Right. It's impossible to even speculate without more context. Yeah. But it definitely speaks to, like, the film's willingness to just push boundaries. Right. And embrace the more outlandish element. Right. Of the Venom the, universe. Yeah. Yeah. I'm also curious about the whole Mrs. Chen dance sequence. Oh, right. Yeah. That keeps popping up. That one, too. Like, what is going on with that? Well, it sounds like just a moment of pure, unexpected weirdness. Okay. You know, and honestly, those kinds of moments can be, like, the most memorable ones. Oh, for sure. The ones that set a film apart yeah. from the more formulaic superhero yeah. fair. Okay, speaking of formulaic, um, one of the criticisms that we saw was that the Venom trilogy as a whole, like, yeah. hasn't accomplished a lot. Do you think that's a fair assessment? Yeah, I, I think it's a valid point. Yeah. Like, Venom hasn't necessarily redefined the superhero genre. Right. Or introduced, like, groundbreaking themes right. the way some other comic book movies have. Mm -hmm. It's not trying to be, like, a profound exploration of the human condition. Okay. Or anything like that, you know? Right, but... It's been commercially successful. Oh, absolutely. And it clearly has a passionate fan base. It does, yeah. And I think that success really speaks to, like, the film's ability to entertain. Okay. You know, they embrace a certain level of camp and fun. Mm -hmm. They're popcorn movies, pure and simple. Right. 
And sometimes that's exactly what audiences are looking for. But isn't there a risk of becoming like too campy, too over the top? Oh, for sure. There's the line. Yeah, that's the balance filmmakers have to strike, right? Yeah. It comes down to execution. Yeah. Okay. If the humor feels forced. Right. Or like the action sequences are poorly executed. Mm -hmm. The film could easily fall apart. Yeah. But if they manage to pull it off, right. that blend of humor and action yeah. can be incredibly effective. Okay, so based on these early reactions, do you think Venom, let there be, Carnage actually strikes that balance? Well, it's it's hard to say for sure without seeing it ourselves, right? Of course, yeah. But I think the fact that some critics are praising the film's emotional depth Mm -hmm. while also acknowledging its flaws right. suggests that there's more to it okay. than just like mindless action and spectacle. Okay, and then of course we have that lingering question about those Spider-Man 4 rumors. Oh, right, yeah. Those... How much do you think those rumors are fueling the hype? I think they're definitely playing a role. Yeah. You know, the possibility of seeing Venom and Spider-Man finally share the screen. Yeah. It's huge for fans. Oh, for sure. And Sony knows that. Yeah. You know, whether it's like a post credit scene or something more substantial. Yeah. The mere suggestion of a crossover is enough to send fans into a frenzy. Yeah, it really is. Yeah. Okay, so all in all, it sounds like Venom, Let There Be Carnage, is shaping up to be a divisive film. I think so. Some people are going to love it, some mm. people are going to hate it, and everyone's going to have an opinion. Exactly. Yeah. And that's what makes it so intriguing, right? Yeah, for sure. It's a film that's not afraid to be bold, to push boundaries. Right. To embrace its own absurdity, mm -hmm. you know, whether that translates into a truly great film right. remains to be seen. Yeah, we'll have to wait and see. But one thing's for sure. What's that? It's going to be a wild ride. I don't know about you, but I'm definitely hooked. Me too. Okay, so before we wrap things up, I want to turn it back to our listener. Yeah, what are you thinking? Now that you've heard more about what Venom, Let There Be Carnage, has to offer. Right. What are your thoughts? What are your expectations? Yeah. Are you hoping for a thought-provoking masterpiece, or are you just looking for like a fun, action-packed escape? Right. What do you think is going to make this last dance a satisfying conclusion to the trilogy? Take a moment to ponder those questions. Yeah, we'll be right back. We'll delve deeper into the possibilities and implications of this film in the final part of our deep dive. Welcome back to our deep dive into Venom, Let There Be Carnage. We've talked about those over-the-top reactions and the potential for emotional depth and, uh, yeah. and of course, those Spider-Man 4 rumors. Right, right. But there's one more thing I kind of wanted to touch on before we wrap things up. Oh, okay. What's that? Well, a few critics mentioned that this film, uh, Venom, Let There Be Carnage, really pushes the boundaries of its PG-13 rating. Oh, interesting. What do you think they mean by that? <laughs> that is interesting, you know, because Venom is a pretty intense character, right? That's for sure. He's known for his violence and, yeah. well, you know, his general creepiness. Yeah. So it seems like the filmmakers are really trying to deliver on, like, that darkness mm. and the action that fans expect from a Venom film. Right. But they also want to keep it accessible. Mm. Right. To a wider audience. So maybe we're talking like strategic editing, creative camera angles, that sort of thing. Exactly. Yeah. It's a delicate balancing act. Yeah. You know, they want to give audiences those thrills and chills without going full blown R rated. Right. And it makes you wonder, like, how much did they actually have to tone things down? I know. To get that PG-13 rating. Yeah. It's a tough line to walk for sure. It is. But, you know, I think it also kind of speaks to the skill of the filmmakers. Yeah. Because if they can create a truly intense and engaging experience right. within the confines of a PG-13 rating, that's pretty impressive. I agree. Yeah, it really shows a commitment yeah. to both the source material and the audience. For sure. You know, they're not shying away from those darker elements. Right. But they're also being mindful of who they're making this film for. So where does that leave us? Yeah. We've dissected these reactions. We've explored all the possibilities. Yeah. And now it's decision time is Venom. Let there be carnage worth your time and money. That's the ultimate question, isn't it? It is. And ultimately, it's up to each individual viewer to decide. But, yeah. you know, I think we can safely say that this film is not going to be for everyone. Absolutely. If you're looking for, like, a deep, thought-provoking exploration of the superhero genre, <laughs> yeah. you might be disappointed. Yeah, you might want to sit this one out. But if you're in the mood for a fun, action-packed, yeah. maybe even a little bit crazy ride, then Venom, Let There Be Carnage might be right up your alley. Yeah, I think so. 
And who knows, maybe it'll surprise us all. It could. Maybe it'll be both a wild spectacle and a surprisingly moving story. We'll have to wait and see. That's the beauty of it, right? The anticipation, the speculation, the chance to be surprised. Exactly. And even if it's not a perfect film, mm -hmm. it's sure to be a memorable one. Okay, so on that note, let's leave our listener with one final thought to chew on. All right, I like it. <laughs> if this truly is the last dance for Tom Hardy's Venom, yeah. what kind of legacy do you think it will leave behind? Will it be a cult classic embraced for its flaws and all? Yeah. Or will it just kind of fade into obscurity, another footnote right. in the ever-expanding world of superhero films? That's a great question to think about. It is. And on that note, we'll wrap up our deep dive into the world of Venom, Let There Be Carnage. Thanks for joining us. And until next time, keep exploring, keep questioning, and most importantly, keep diving deep.